Hello and welcome to the introduction to computers. In this series of lectures, we are going to discuss with you what is the basic concept of computers, what are the basic terminology which is associated with computers, and many more the concepts such as applications of the computers. In today's session, what we are going to do is something related to very basic or very beginning kind of a thing which is called computer hardware. To begin with any discussion about hardware, what we must start with is the basic definition. The basic definition of the computer and that's what I would like to have a look at. A digital computer is a general purpose, automatic, electronic, digital device. If you look into the definition, there are four basic aspects relating to this particular definition. These aspects are general purpose. That simply means a computer is a device which is to be utilized not for one, but many applications. Okay? So that's where the general purpose basically comes in. The second thing is automatic and electronic. In fact, third thing is electronic. Automatic, it simply means once we start the processing of computers somehow, it should take care of a number of steps automatically without the intervention of the human being in between. And the third thing, electronic. Now, today's computer is truly an electronic computer. And that's why this particular terminology has been included in definition. Otherwise, the earlier, the beginning, the starting computers were not really electronics. They were based on electromechanical or other mechanical, purely mechanical kind of devices. And the final term in this particular definition is digital. I think it is one of the most or extremely important term which today's computer are dealing with. The digital we play with digital systems, all right? What kind of digital systems we play with? Decimal digits. We play with numbers such as 1 to 9 and so on and so forth. We play with other kinds of data also, such as characters, A, B, C, D, and that kind of a thing. So our data in day-to-day -day life consists of decimal digits, characters, and so on and so forth, logical data also, such as true, false, kind. However, in computers, since it's in a, it is an electronic device, everything is through something called binary. And that is two-state device concept of electronics. So everything has to be in, in binary. Therefore, whatever digital representation of information we are having has to be converted into binary. Therefore, there have been many concepts in fact, many representations I'll call for representing information in computers and mainly information can be categorized into the three categories. One is arithmetic category of information, that is the digital numbers we are familiar with, which are normally converted into the binary number system of the computers. The second kind of information is character kind of information which actually is coded into the computer through some kind of code. And a very popular example of code which is used in our day-to-day -day computer is called ASCII, American National Standard Code of Information Interchange. The other kind of definition which we are having is logical data. Logical data in the form that most of the, we will find some of the cases, for example, a particular person, a particular condition is true or not. A particular person has arrived or not. So we require two kinds of representation for this kind of information, true or false. And that is what we call logical information. All that information, whether it is arithmetic, whether it is character information, or it is logical information, has somehow to be coded into the form of computers. The second major aspect which is relating to computer is it accepts and performs. 
operation on digital data. Now, this is basically continuation of the definition which I have given you earlier. What I am saying here is it accepts and perform operations on digital data. I have already defined the term data. I have already defined the term general purpose. Now, coupling the two, general purpose simply means we have many applications to be used or many applications to be incorporated into the computer somehow. Now, how? We have a, an apparatus which is electronic in nature. So, we have got to do something and that something what we do today is that we have, we are using the term called instruction. What does instruction mean? An instruction simply means I tell to the computer whether an arithmetic addition is to be performed or a logical operation is to be performed or something else is to be performed. The something else I have not defined as yet. Probably in the next few lectures we might take up that something else. But the basic crux of the matter is the computer is supposed to perform some operation onto the data and that operation has to be specified through, through an instruction. And if we code several instructions in a sequence that we get a meaningful objective, all right? For example, I want to do calculation of income tax. Then there are a series of instructions that is first find out the total pay. Thereafter, based on the pay, then I take several decisions whether the pay is less than 60,000, it is more than 60,000 and less than 1 lakh and so on and so forth. So similarly, all these things one by one in the form of instruction and is, can be coded into the computer and that can be utilized as a program. So the ultimate form of instruction in the computer is in the form of program. And that is where lies the general purpose nature of the computer. For a different kind of role you want your computer to play, you give it a different kind of program. And that is once again relating to the definition of computers. Let us look at some other aspects of computers. And that is what we basically define two basic terminology, computer hardware and computer software. In this session, we will be focusing on only computer hardware aspects. As I told you earlier, computer has come, come up a very, very long way, starting from some kind of mechanical devices, mechanical computing devices. And today, what we talk about is purely electronics, purely electronics form of computer, which can perform multiple amount of calculation in one second. The earlier computer used to perform hardly hundreds or two hundred operations. In this context, I will not cover up the history, but what would I like to point out that the major breakthroughs which has paved the way of the electronic faster computers of today. And that thing came because of something which we dearly known as integrated circuit technology. The integrated circuit technology has come up from a very low angle to what we call ultra large scale integration today. We started with the concept of small scale integration and came up to the concept of ultra large scale integration today. But before we discuss more about this particular integrated circuit technology, let us once again explore some more basics of the computer and that some more basic of the computer is the structure of the computer. The basic structure of the computer can be categorized in three basic elements or three basic forms. And what basically a computer consists of? Look into mean memory, the central processing unit and the input output system. The central processing unit is the key element of any computer system and it 
itself consists of three more elements, something called operational registers, something called arithmetic and logic unit, and the third thing which is called control unit. The basic purpose of arithmetic and logic unit is, as the name tells, to perform arithmetic and logic operations onto the computer. Whereas the basic job of operational registers is to store intermediate data which is produced by arithmetic and logic unit. And the control unit is responsible for controlling the whole central processing unit as well the main memory as well the input output system. So the control unit is responsible for controlling the whole computer rather than the, uh, the only central processing unit. The other component which is mentioned over here is called main memory. Now main memory is one of the extremely important element of any computer system where instructions or program as well as data get, is get, uh, get stored. It is fetched by the central processing unit and followed, that is instructions which are coming from the main memory to the central processing unit are followed or executed by the central processing unit. And input output devices are mainly responsible for inputting a program or data into the computer system. And remember one thing about this particular structure of the computer, that this kind of structure was proposed by John von Neumann and even today most of the computers follow this kind of a structure, except for newer te uh, term uh, terminology which are coming into the market such as multiprocessor systems and so on and so forth. But even today, one human architecture is the popular op architecture as far as computer systems are concerned. Now look into the basic concept of an integrated circuit technology. The integrated circuit technology is based on a very small electronic component which is called a transistor. And many transistors today can be integrated onto the sim simple circuit in the simple form and that is on a silicon chip. And the smallest unit which we recognize is something which is called a logical unit and that is called a gate. So many gates are fabricated onto a single chip to form a integrated circuit. All right. So this con this basically is silicon wafer on which you will find a chip available. So similar kind of chips are fabricated on a silicon wafer and then they are broken into various pieces. So many chips are produced in a single go. Then these chips are packed into what we call something called integrated circuit packages. All right. So look into the graphics once again. This is a chip and this whole unit is a package. Similarly, this is a chip, this is a package and to interact that is, this chip has to interact with external environment. For that, we provide some kind of legs which are called pins to a chip. I will demonstrate to you a chip. Look into this particular page, portion. These are the legs or the pins of the chips. In the diagram, it is quite different. These pins are shown like that, all right? And this whole thing contains the chip which I was talking about. Another interesting aspect about the structure, once again we are traversing back about of the computer is that fine, we are having main memory, we are having central processing unit, we are having input output system. But how are they connected? 
are they connected through some kind of say wire? Probably yes. But that wire are designed in such a fashion that all the components, that is the central processing unit, the memory, as well as input output systems are onto the same set of wire. And that is in today's terminology, that is the interconnection co connection, uh, structure of the computer is known as the bus. I'm not showing you the bus, but I would like to show you a kind of interconnection structure which you might find in a hard disk. These kinds of lines, if you can visualize the lines over here. Now these lines are basically interconnection structure through which data actually get passed. All right. So this is the basic structure of a computer system. And let us explore something else. And that is what we would like to talk about is what are the basic advantages we have seen the integrated circuit. We have seen what are, we must know what are the basic advantages of integrated circuit technology and why they should, they are so popul popularly being utilized in day to day applications. And the basic advantages which we say falls into the, such as low cost. What does low cost mean? Low cost implies that if a computer is to be fabricated. And if it is to be fabricated with discrete components, the cost is definitely going to be high. But if we can integrate many compu components of a computer onto the same chip, then definitely cost is going to reduce like anything. The more is the integration, the more is the cost. And you can visualize that particular thing in the falling prices of the computer. The computer's prices, if you can visualize, five years back, the cost of a microcomputer was 50,000, 60,000 rupees. But today, they have gone down tremendously. And you can get a decently good computer, much faster than what it was earlier, five years back, at the lower cost than what it was earlier. What is the basic reason? that we are moving to integrated circuit technology. And integrated circuit technology that is more dense. What does dense mean? We are packing more and more number of gate into the integrated circuit. And that is what the low cost means. The second major advantage of integrated circuit technology is greater operating speed. Visualize the environment where the distances are large. Okay. Although we say that electronics is very fast, to it the distance does not matter. But if the compact is the size, the easier it will be as far as operating speed is concerned. The smaller is the size, faster is the speed. The smaller is the size, marginal fraction of increase as far as speed is concerned. And that in computer sense may boil down to maybe million of more instructions in a second. The third major advantage goes to smaller computers, better portability. This portability is basically relating to the aspects such as keeping the computer onto my desk, keeping the computer onto my table. Today, I think you must have uh, heard about the term called uh, something called laptop kind of computers, notebook kind of computers, and small electronic diaries also. What are the basic things, I mean, how these things are coming into picture? These are coming into this particular environment only because today the integrated circuit technology is moving very fast towards ultra large scale integration. Smaller sizes, better portability. Reduction in power and cooling. Fine, that I think can be uh, very, very evidently known to you. The smaller is the size, the smaller are power requirements, the smaller are the cooling requirements also. Because these is, this is an electronic device, it has to dissipate heat. So smaller is the component, 
smaller is the amount of uh, circuitry or amount of fans etc. required to cool this particular component. And finally, but the most important one is the reliability of computer. Reliability because the integrated circuit technology is very, very reliable. The circuits are inside the chip and once they are fabricated, it is, and once they are packaged into the IC chip, it is very difficult to destroy them. And that is why we say they are more reliable, in fact, highly reliable kind of technology which is available to us. The EVF integrated circuit, in fact, has taken us to a very long way. And today, the other kind of terminologies which we talk about are called something of the type, something called semiconductor memories. And the second important aspect which I would like to talk about in more details is something which we call microprocessor. A microprocessor is a single, simple device or in fact what we call a microprocessor is a CPU which is fabricated using ultra large scale integration or very large scale integration technology onto a single silicon chip. Realize the importance of this particular thing. That is the whole CPU is onto a single chip. No external connections are required. The processor is bound to be very fast. And the terminology which you encounter in your day-to-day -day computer manufacturing or computer environment, something called Intel 8086, 8088, Intel 186, 286, Motorola 68000 and so on and so forth. What are all these? These are basically names given by the respective manufacturers to a typical integrated circuit chip microprocessor, okay? And the most popular one which we are dealing with today in Intel series. Why I am talking about Intel? Because Intel is one of the company which is making microprocessor which is used in our day-to-day -day used computers and that computer we call microcomputer or personal computer and so on and so forth. So today's most popular uh, microprocessor, if you look into the details, are Pentium as well as 486 computers. New, new microprocessors have also come into the market. PowerPC series is already into the market with different kind of Motorola based microprocessors. Whereas the Pentium P6, all these are Intel based uh, microprocessors. The basic advantage of having advanced series. For example, we have moved from 8088 to somewhere around Pentium microprocessor. What we say, the increasing number of bits of the processor. Now, what does that particular term mean? That is, the, what we say is 8080 was, Intel 8080 was an 8-bit processor. And today, Pentium is a 32-bit processor. So what those these 32-bit, 8-bit terminology means to us? The basic concept relating to this particular terminology once again boils down to something which we call the arithmetic logic unit. A microprocessor capable of processing 8-bit information at a time is an 8-bit microprocessor. A microprocessor which is capable of processing 32-bit information at a time is a 32-bit processor. That is very simple. But who basically does the processing? The central processing unit. And even in the central processing unit, the arithmetic logic unit along with the operational registers. Control unit fine. Control unit, the role of control unit is to control overall. But the basic processing part is done in the arithmetic logic unit. That means if I say a 32-bit processor, 
then the size of the arithmetic logic unit has to be 32 bits. What do I mean by size of arithmetic logic unit? That means if it is performing arithmetic operations, then it will perform on 32 bits simultaneously an arithmetic operation. For example, add. If we are adding two numbers, two binary numbers using the arithmetic logic unit of computers, then 32 bit of information will be processed in a single go. And that is what is basically what we say 32 bit computer. In addition to that, one more concept which lies with this kind of computers are fine, this particular computer processes data are 32 bit, but what about interfacing? That is, getting information from the memory to the computer system. Whether we are passing information of 16 bit or we are passing information of 32 bit, that is the bus size. How much information we are passing from our main memory to the computer ALU or the CPU of the computer? And what is the size of the operational registers? As far as size of the operational registers is concerned, it has to be the size of the ALU most of the time. In fact, 90% of the register must have the size of the arithmetic logic unit. So, as far as size of the register is concerned, that has to be the number of bits of the processor which we claim. However, the external bus width, that is the bus, the width of information which is passed from the main memory to the processor depends on many factors. And one of the factors which exist is which we call maintaining or maintaining the investment, previous investments intact. And the old devices which we used to have earlier were of smaller number of bits. Okay? So that's why if you look into some kind of 8088 kind of chip, you will see that information is passed in 8086, uh, 8088 uh, microprocessor uh, using 8-bit information. However, the internal processing and information is of 16-bit in 88. And this kind of thing which we call is the internal path and external path. The internal path in 8088 is 16-bit, whereas the external path is 8 bits only. So in a single go, only 8 bit of information will be passed to this microprocessor. That means two memory accesses will be required by this microprocessor for performing calculations onto the data. In the end, let us sum up about what we have covered in this particular session. We have discussed about the basic definition of the computer. We have also discussed about the basic structure of the computer and we have also discussed about the basic technology which is the most popular technology of making computers and that is integrated circuit technology. With this, we end this session. Bye for now.